But here's the thing, you know, I can't think of another candidate that's had such a media and political establishment torrent against him. He's been uh, hit with all these uh, legal cases, uh, uh, facing uh, attempts to disqualify him even from the ballot by Democrats in two different states, uh, vilified as a sexual predator and a crook and an election stealer, uh, an insurrectionist, and still Republicans say, we want him. What does that tell you? That tells me that results matter. And look, when you contrast, the, most elections, Andrew, are, are hypothetical. I'll do this, I'll promise you that. What we are shaping up to have in America is, is a race where it's a strict contrast between a four years of, of a Trump presidency and a Trump administration and what will be close to four years of a Biden administration. And if you look both domestically and internationally, there couldn't be a sharper contrast. President Trump will go out and say, I was you know, sec energy secure as a country. We didn't rely on other countries. Our border was secure. Our economy was in better shape. More people were at work. The interest rates were a lot lower. Gas was a lot lower. And foreign policy-wise, we weren't involved in incursions. Putin wasn't invading another country. Iran wasn't going nuts. Uh, Hamas wasn't firing rockets in Israel. China wasn't as provocative as it was and certainly wasn't openly talking about taking over Taiwan the way it is. That's a very, very sharp and concrete contrast between the two campaigns. And I think the American people, when you look at the polling, start to say, I like, I might not have liked all the style of Donald Trump and, the, and the, some of the rhetoric, but I like the results. I was safer. I was more prosperous. My cities were better. My counties were better. And I think that's a big, big difference uh, that Donald Trump has going for him. The other thing that's the big X factor for the Democrats, Andrew, is the following. We had a poll come out this weekend by ABC News where only 28 percent of Americans said that they thought that Joe Biden had the mental prowess to be president, right? They don't believe. And, and the problem with that is that nothing gets better with age unless it's cheese or wine. And right now, Joe Biden is suffering, you know, uh, just the, the reality of becoming and getting older, both mentally and physically. I think one of the key questions here, the, uh, uh, Sean Spicer, is this. Uh, we're talking about how the Republicans feel about their candidate. What would Joe Biden, with his doddery, you know, performance and, and what you've just said about his foreign performance, which I think has been terrible, uh, the domestic uh, scene, the economy is not looking that great. He looks at today at Iowa at the strong support for Donald Trump. Is he glad or sad? It's a that's a great question. Uh, look, I think that a lot of Democrats, including you know Joe Biden's campaign, want to run this race against Trump, but I think they're missing something. This is the same thing that Hillary Clinton missed, and so many folks in our in our media here miss, is that. There's a lot that they might disdain about Trump and his style, but th that is what draws so many people to Trump. His ability to kick dirt in the face, his ability to be unconventional and, and, uh, and say things and do things that other people weren't, his ability to keep foreign leaders off guard and fight for America first. Um, those are things that I think the left and the media sometimes mock, but it's what people, uh, so many working men and women find strengths. And that's the, the beauty of where Democrats misread uh, this race. It's interesting, too. I think uh, part of it might be that a lot of uh, Americans are looking at the dirty tricks used to uh, try to stop Trump and think uh, these people cannot be allowed to succeed. Um, but speaking of that, I mean, Sean, you kind of miss the hysteria going on in the media left at the moment. It is just... Unbelievable. I haven't seen anything like it. You've got, they've gone crazy. In, in the US, for instance, you're seeing headlines like this warning on NBC website of the election of Donald Trump dictator. Fears grow that Trump will use the military in dictatorial ways if he returns to the White House. And in the Washington Post, this amazing headline, a Trump dictatorship is increasingly inevitable. We should stop pretending. What on earth is going on? Are these people onto something that Trump is posing a risk of dictatorship, or have they completely lost the plot? Well, I would say that they completely lost it, except that th this is a continuation, Andrew, right? I was part of that 2016 effort, and there was this whole false narrative about coordinating with Russia. And as someone who was there, I kept I always laughed at it at first, because I thought to myself, the, the prevailing narrative at the time was that we couldn't coordinate with ourselves. 
Then it was that we coordinated with Russia. Then you look to 2020 and you think there's this Hunter Biden laptop that has very damaging accusations against the president and his family and the business dealings that they're doing. And it gets completely suppressed by big government. Um, you had 51 intelligence agents, I mean, uh, uh, officials sign letters about Russian disinformation. All of this stuff, they will go to no lengths to stop this president. And now we're seeing not just the headlines that you pointed out, but efforts to use the 14th Amendment of our Constitution to keep the president off the ballot, to not let democracy. And so, again, think about this for a second. One of the big narratives coming out of the Democrats is about how democracy is under attack. You see this now. It's it's manifesting itself into dictatorships. But the irony is, is that they're the ones canceling people's ability to vote. And it's not just Donald Trump. In Florida, they canceled the Democratic primary. They don't want any, Joe Biden to face any competition. And now they're using it to try to keep Donald Trump off the ballot, too. It's ironic because it's the, the folks on the left in the Democratic Party and their buddies in the media that are, in fact, the undemocratic ones. It's just extraordinary to me, and it's causing uh, America terrible damage internationally. I mean, some people actually take this stuff seriously, unfortunately. That's right. I mean, dictatorship. Uh, honestly, how they misunderstand, how they underestimate Trump, but even worse, underestimate, uh, underestimate America. Sean Spicer, thank you so much indeed for your time. Always good to be with you. Thank you.